I don't have 10 pearls to share with you all. I probably have about six, uh, so which makes my task a little easier uh, compared to the, the previous talk, which was uh, uh, very extensive and well done as well. All right, okay, so before we, uh, so the first point, so it's all on uh, point form. Uh, without uh, you know, treating, uh, before we start treating uh, status epilepticus, we need to know really uh, what, uh, what status epilepticus is. So we need to uh, understand the definition uh, of, uh, of status epilepticus. And there are a few definitions which we need to go through. Uh, and the first is actually the uh, ILAE definition, uh, which was actually introduced in 2015. Uh, and they've uh, defined status epilepticus as thus, where it's a condition resulting in uh, either from failure of mechanisms res responsible for seizure termination or from uh, the initiation of mechanisms which lead to an abnormally prolonged seizure. Uh, so this is one time point where uh, beyond this particular time point, uh, uh, we consider that particular seizure to be, uh, uh, or this, the patient who is experiencing that particular seizure to be in status. Uh, it, it also encompasses the long-term consequence of having such a seizure, uh, where uh, if this condition goes on, uh, it can that, that can have long-term consequences after a certain time period, which is uh, time point uh, number two or T2, where, which could result in neuronal death, neuronal injury, and uh, alteration of uh, neural networks, depending on the type and duration of the seizure. Uh, so in other words, if, if a seizure uh, either persists or is recurrent uh, over a, a period of time, uh, depending on the seizure type, uh, we, we call that patient to have, uh, we, we define the patient to have uh, status epilepticus. And beyond the second time point, that is, if, if it persists for a, a longer period of time, then that particular seizure can result in uh, neuronal death or what we call apoptosis or programmed cell death. Uh, so these time points are, are different for different types of, of uh, seizures or seizure semiology. Uh, so uh, there are various types of uh, status epilepticus. Uh, the one that we are often uh, uh, familiar with is the generalized convulsive status epilepticus. Uh, so the generally uh, status or uh, the seizure types that we experience in status can is uh, is uh, can be uh, broadly uh, defined as uh, motor predominant uh, seizures and uh, non motor non-motor seizures, and of which the motor predominant seizures are, one, are often what we, uh, what we see and experience. Uh, and they again can be generalized convulsive seizures, they can be uh, focal to tonic-clonic or bilateral tonic-clonic seizures, myoclonic seizures, and focal motor seizures. Uh, whereas uh, the non-motor seizures are often what we uh, uh, XP, or what we define as non convulsive status, which can again be uh, uh, again uh, focal of focal onset origin, uh, where, for example, a temporal lobe seizure can go on uh, for hours without being detected, and also it could be an absence seizure, which we, we, uh, which could result in absence status. So, uh, time point one, right? That's where we, we define. Uh, the, the patient to have uh, uh, seizures beyond a certain time point. Uh, and if, if, it's, if the patient has a generalized tonic chronic chronic seizure, which lasts for more than five minutes, five minutes or more, that patient is, uh, is defined as having status epilepticus. If uh, the patient has focal seizures, uh, whether, it, whether it be focal motor or uh, non-motor uh, uh, seizures, again, the definition is uh, more than 10 minutes. Uh, and when it comes to absence seizures, uh, it, it's 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, that's the first time uh, time point where we would consider these patients to have status epilepticus. Um, now, this these time points are very important, uh, and you should understand that more than 99% of, of 
uh, seizures uh, are often self-terminate uh, and often these seizures self-terminate within two minutes uh, and on average uh, the seizure duration is around 62 seconds so it, you need and it's very important for you to uh, to give that information to your patients because if if the patient is having a seizure for more than five minutes that's, that patient is in status and needs to have urgent uh, attention uh, that's if it is a, of, of course a generalized uh, seizure so the second time point again so this is the second the time point where we, we where these patients would uh, result or the the, the the persistent or the recurrent seizures would re result in neuronal damage and uh, the in generalized uh, tonic chronic seizures it's 30 minutes whereas in focal seizures it's more than 60 minutes uh, and absence seizures we really don't know what the second uh, time point is okay so the, those are the two time points which which, which have been incorporated into the definition of what status is you need to know also what uh, what really uh, refractory status epilepticus is uh, and uh, when a patient is in status epilepticus if the patient uh, does not respond uh, early uh, to early benzodiazepines and uh, a single or one additional first line antiseizure medication that patient is supposed to be in a refractory status epilepticus. Uh, prior to this definition, which is the most recent, uh, there was a time uh, frame or time point where they, they were defined as 30 minutes. But this, this has been taken off now. And uh, now well, they say is, uh, if it's uh, resistant to uh, benzos as well as first line antiseizure medication, then that particular patient is in res refractory status epilepticus. Then, of course, we go on to super refractory status epilepticus, where if seizures do not terminate after using uh, a benzo, uh, first line anti seizure medication, as well as a uh, an, uh, anesthetic agent, uh, then this patient is supposed to be in super refractory status epilepticus. Here, of course, they define uh, they do def define a time point or a, a duration of twenty four hours uh, of twenty four hours where this patient should be treated with a general anesthetic for a period of 24 hours. So now we've, we've, we've completed, or at least I've tried to define uh, what status epilepticus, the two time points that are necessary for us to, uh, um, to, be, uh, to define what status epilepticus. We've also spoken about uh, refractory as well as super refractory status epilepticus and also given you an idea that you know status epilepticus does not only encompass generalized seizures it also encompasses focal as well as absence seizures and the time points that we would consider these patients to be in refractory status epilepticus also changes according to uh, the seizure type all right so that's the first point the second point is time is brain now you 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 are obviously familiar uh, with uh, this uh, point when it comes to uh, stroke where uh, you know Time is of essence where you need to uh, reperfuse as quickly as po possible. So it's, it's similarly in uh, in uh, in status epilepticus, uh, time is brain. So the longer uh, uh, you let the uh, the seizures uh, go on untreated, that can result in devastating uh, uh, effects with increased morbidity as well as more uh, mortality. Uh, simply because status can result in uh, neuronal cell death uh, uh, as a re result of apoptosis. So, uh, they, so time is brain. So uh, the initial uh, treatment is, I'm sure everybody is aware, is uh, so by giving a benzodiazepine as uh, uh, to, to achieve rapid uh, control over status epilepticus, and also then move on to the class, the, sec, the second line on a, to uh, the next option would be to give a classical anti uh, drug uh, target to uh, treat early resistant forms of status epilepticus and then if the uh, the uh, uh, treatment is unsuccessful then we go on to uh, use a general anesthetic agent and that's the general sequence of uh, treatment that you would generally adhere to when treating patients with status epilepticus. 
So uh, time is of the essence. So uh, you need to uh, initiate benzodiazepine uh, treatment within five minutes. And these are the available options that you generally uh, 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 have for patients with status epilepticus. Lorazepam, not so much available in Sri Lanka. Uh, it's, it's one of the preferred benzodiazepines uh, in uh, most of the other developed uh, countries. Uh, we do have midazolam, we do have diazepam. Uh, and I, as you can see, the, these are the various routes of uh, uh, administration that have with, with the, the various doses. Uh, it's, very, it, it's, um, uh, it's a little, in, uh, it, it's uh, 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 easy to remember uh, the doses per kilogram. So it starts off with uh, 0.1 milligram starting from lorazepam, then 0.15 milligram per kilogram, then it goes on to 0.2 milligram. So it's a stepwise increase from lorazepam, uh, uh, diazepam, and then midazolam. That's for the IV preparation. Uh, the, so if you ask me if there's, if there's, is there a difference in, 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 the, in the three drugs that, uh, in trying to control benzodiazepines, the, the answer is probably not, uh, because there's no, uh, there's no firm or there's no um, hard evidence to uh, choose one drug over the other, but uh, there are some advantages, uh, for example, of say, uh, lorazepam is less fat soluble, doesn't distribute uh, very quickly into the uh, uh, into uh, the periphery and stays longer within the intravascular compartment. So that has uh, an advantage over the other two drugs. Uh, whereas when it comes to midazolam, uh, uh, there are multiple routes which can be used. For example, the IEM route uh, would give us an advantage over the other uh, drugs because if you have uh, uh, in the inability to, uh, to get IV access, midazolam, IM works as well. Uh, you can also use buccal midazolam, you can use intranasal midazolam. So midazolam does have its uh, uses and it's often used in pre hospital medication uh, in other countries. Dazepam, again, uh, quite often used uh, uh, per rectally in, in, uh, um, uh, in children. Uh, so, benzodiazepines is very important for you to initiate within five minutes, so the times of the uh, essence. Uh, but benzodiazepines per se might not be enough uh, for you to uh, control the seizures. And that's because um, uh, these benzodiazepines wear off very quickly. Uh, and especially when it com comes to pathophysiology of status epilepticus. Uh, benzodiazepines are generally GABAergic, they, they, uh, they act on the GABA receptors, whereas uh, uh, in status, as time progresses, uh, there's, a, there's internalization of, of the GABA receptors, and there's a reduction in the number of GABA receptors available for benzodiazepines to act. Uh, and there's an upregulation or overexpression of AMPA and glutamate receptors, uh, which are uh, excitatory uh, receptors, which is one of the reasons why, uh, why these patients go on uh, to have persisting, uh, uh, persistent seizures. Uh, and for this reason alone, benzodiazepines might not be enough for you to control these uh, uh, seizures. So then, uh, so you need to, uh, once you've initiated your benzodiazepines, you might need to start them on a longer acting anti uh, proper anti -epileptic. Uh, drug and um, uh, traditionally these three drugs which are basically phenytoin, levitoxan and valprata have been considered as first line and uh, intravenous antiepileptic medications which you need to consider uh, at 10 minutes uh, following uh, administration of uh, uh, benzodiazepines. Uh, I've given you the uh, the, the initial bolus doses, as well as uh, once you've initiated the bolus dose, you need to start them on uh, maintenance dosing as well. Uh, if you ask me if, uh, if, there, if there are preference, uh, so we do have, uh, in Sri Lanka, we do have IV phenytoin, of course not so much phosphenytoin, which has a uh, lesser side effect profile. Uh, levitiristam as well as valproate. Uh, valproate, not so much, but we do have IV levitiristam. Is there any particular preference of, 
uh, of an anti-epileptic drug uh, for uh, to control and uh, uh, status epileptic, as I would say, probably not bec uh, because uh, the latest uh, evidence uh, suggests that uh, all three are of similar efficacy. Uh, uh, there was some. Um, uh, it was initially thought that levetiracetam uh, would trump most of the other uh, IV uh, drugs with regards to uh, side effects. Uh, for, for example, phenytoin uh, as well as phosphonectoin do have a very narrow therapeutic uh, range where it doesn't follow uh, first order kinetics, it's uh, more, more or less zero order kinetics, as well as uh, it does have. Uh, serious side effects such, such as uh, cardiac toxicity, which, uh, uh, which can cause uh, fatal arrhythmias, it can cause uh, uh, superficial throm uh, thrombosis, uh, purple graft syndrome, all of which are very severe side effects uh, on phenytoin. Whereas levitarism was thought to uh, be benign, less benign, sorry, uh, benign, where there are very few drug, drug interactions. Um, and uh, uh, it was thought to have a lesser side effect profile. However, uh, the uh, trial data, of course, suggests that all three are of, uh, uh, have similar uh, efficacy and uh, have a similar mortality profile as well. So there isn't a drug that we would choose one over the other. However, certain instances, we might prefer uh, a certain IV preparation depending on uh, for example, comorbidities of of a certain uh, um, of the of the particular individual. There are also second line antipathetic drugs which to consider. Uh, for example, the cosamide. We do not have an IV preparation uh, as of yet uh, in Sri Lanka, but uh, hopefully in future, uh, topiramate and gabapentin are oral preparations which can be considered uh, in this context. All right. So moving on. Uh, so we've we've spoken about the uh, first line benzodiazepines. Then uh, second line, second line, uh, we uh, we initiate an epileptic drug. The patient still persists, does not recover. We need to initiate uh, the urgent. Uh, you know, uh, the patient needs to be moved into an intensive care unit. Uh, they, we need to start them on a, on a general anesthetic. Of which these are the three drugs that we would generally prefer. Propofol is commonly used in in uh, uh, resist or refractory status at that because and this needs to be uh, initiated within uh, 30 minutes uh, of uh, of the seizure uh, commencement of the seizure uh, i've given you the, uh, the the initial loading doses as well as the maintenance doses uh, again there isn't a clear um, uh, uh, preference uh, for example, propofol over midazolam uh, or phenobarbital, where efficacy seems to be uh, more or less the same. Uh, however, um, phenobarbital, uh, as uh, all, uh, almost all of these uh, general anesthetic agents, do cause hypertension uh, and cardiac depression, which you need to consider uh, when you are. Uh, often, these patients will be would be ventilated. Uh, and uh, therefore, uh, these drugs might prolong uh, recovery as well. So that needs to be considered when you are treating these patients uh, with these agents. All right. So, so those are the uh, so time is brain. So you need to start uh, medication quickly. Uh, you you have first line, second line, and third line uh, uh, agents that I've described previously. Then. The third point that I'd like to uh, to highlight is to find a cause. Uh, and uh, to find a cause, you need to, your initial investigation should be done within minutes of the patient. So, uh, treating the status affected uh, status, uh, there should be concurrent investigations to find out the cause as well. Uh, and uh, you should uh, have IV access, send out venous blood for electrolytes, any function tests. Uh, renal function test glucose, very important. Hypoglycemia is often missed sometimes uh, because of uh, uh, the, the rush to treat the patient. We all, all always uh, forget the simple things uh, such as hypoglycemia uh, can often 
uh, result in devastating seizures as well. The blood count as well. ED levels, uh, not so much in, in this country. Uh, uh, however, in uh, uh, developed countries, we would generally send up AED levels if the patient has a, is a known epileptic patient. Uh, as well as other drug levels, such as, uh, for example, toxicology screen. Uh, and now uh, we, we are seeing more and more patients uh, with a lot of um, uh, patients coming with uh, status epilepticus, especially of, uh, as a result of uh, toxic encephalopathy uh, due to uh, uh, use of recreational drugs. Uh, and that needs to be borne in mind as well. And you need to have that at the back of your mind, uh, where if, if the patient has no etiology uh, that is apparent in your history as well as uh, uh, you might have to uh, consider the possibility of uh, toxic encephalopathy and the toxicology screen, especially uh, urine toxicology, might be uh, useful in coming to a diagnosis. And you you need to and it's a it's a it's a narrow uh, window which you need to consider. Because simply because uh, most of the toxicology screens will be positive only within the first uh, 72 hours. Imaging is very important. We need to consider the possibility of structural lesion uh, and lumbar functioning in certain instances where we, are, we would suspect uh, uh, probable uh, CNS infection as the cause for status epilepticus. These are the common causes uh, that, uh, uh, that are listed out, uh, which uh, are common worldwide um, and uh, they are often classed in uh, or classified into uh, structural causes, um, metabolic, uh, inflammatory, infective, uh, genetic, and uh, genetic, and all. Or, and some, at times, uh, we really don't know the cause. Uh, so, this is, an, uh, is a, a fairly representative list uh, of causes that could. Um, cause status epilepticus. Right. The fourth point, the importance of the EEG in managing status epilepticus. Um, EEG is, uh, is important in uh, two aspects. Uh, often, uh, so this, the whole talk is been, uh, today was based on generalized convulsive uh, status epilepticus. I've mm -hmm. not really spoken about focal onset uh, uh, or focal as well as absence status epilepticus because the highest mortality as well as the highest morbidity is as a result of convulsive status epilepticus. Uh, but you need to understand that convulsive status epilepticus as, they, as seizures go, go, uh, go on, uh, they, uh, they, they go on to develop non-convulsive status epilepticus uh, as, uh, and often go undiagnosed. Uh, and the only way of actually uh, diagnosing these patients would be a, a, an EEG. Um, and that in, uh, also uh, will uh, give us a uh, uh, direction with regards to treatment as well. So treatment goals also are dependent on uh, EEG. Uh, and ideally these patients should be who are on the ICU uh, being treated for uh, status epilepticus should have continuous EEG monitoring, uh, where, where therapy, uh, therapeutics or treatment uh, would be to uh, abolish uh, the, the uh, uh, seizure activity, electrical seizure activity, which is seen on, observed on, on the EEG. With regards to therapeutic goals, the, uh, the initial uh, treatment goal uh, a few years back was to actually uh, go for what's called uh, 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 suppression in the sense um, uh, to suppress the background uh, and to see what's called a birth suppression uh, EEG where, where you, you suppress uh, the um, uh, to see the uh, birth suppression every uh, for about one to two seconds every 10 seconds uh, that was 10 to 20 seconds which that was the goal uh, initially but now there is this uh, worry where uh, so if we uh, go for that uh, treatment goal, the, the, these patients take a longer time to uh, recover. And because of the longer stay in uh, the ICU, uh, they are more liable for, to uh, have 
uh, or have greater morbidity as well as, well as more uh, mortality because of the prolonged recovery. Uh, so now there is this debate where, uh, uh, whether whether we should be only treating the electrographic features and not really suppressing uh, the background. And that's for the, the uh, neurology senior registrars uh, uh, to contemplate. Right, so fifth point. Uh, so there's a fair number of uh, uh, patients who uh, come with what's called new onset uh, refractory uh, stasis epilepticus. Uh, that's called NORS, N-O-R-S-E. Uh, and uh, this entity is now uh, you know, being recognized more and more. Uh, and, uh, and a fair number of patients uh, are thought to have an autoimmune cause for these uh, for the uh, the status epilepticus. And when would you uh, uh, think of an autoimmune cause for uh, for status? And uh, these are uh, these are the um, points that you would generally try to remember uh, that might uh, point you towards. Uh, 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 status epilepticus due to a autoimmune cause. So, if a patient comes with status epilepticus as as a presentation of new onset uh, seizures where the patient has not had a, a previous history of epilepsy, and you have no identifiable etiology on your workup, the one that I've uh, alluded to you before, uh, then you might consider the possibility of autoimmune uh, uh, process. Uh, progression to refractory or super refractory status of the fetus very very quickly. So um, that again, uh, especially if your if patients are in super refractory status of because you don't have a cause, you have to uh, you might have to consider uh, pathology. Uh, relative recent explosive onset of seizures, so a flurry of seizures, sudden uh, prior to status of the fetus, where uh, that again might 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 suggest. Possibility of an autoimmune uh, cause, absence of uh, an established epilepsy history, presence of other neurological problems such as memory loss, autonomic dysfunction, ataxia, movement disorder prior or during the course of uh, status might again point you towards, the, uh, or towards an autoimmune cause. Uh, history of cancer, uh, new onset psychiatric symptoms or behavioral changes prior to status, again. Uh, possibility of uh, autoimmune pro of an autoimmune process, and the CSF giving rise to a leukocytic psychosis again might suggest. With all this in mind, might suggest the uh, possibility of an autoimmune pathology. Uh, and uh, if an autoimmune uh, process is indeed uh, uh, identified, then you need to go on with immunosuppression. And this is a busy slide. I apologize for that, but just to give you options. Uh, for uh, therapeutic options in these, but this particular cohort of patients, uh, where we would generally consider path next change, corticosteroids, IVIG as first line uh, immunotherapies, and if, uh, if they don't work, then we go on to second line immunotherapies, which include cyclophosphamide, rituximab, and microphenolate, as well as aspartame. Um, so uh, you need to have that also at the back of your mind, especially if, if uh, a patient comes with NOS or new ones that refractory status because you might have to consider these as therapeutic options. All right, the sixth point and the last point, use of, uh, uh, we, during uh, the treatment of status because we try as much as possible to use uh, multiple anti-epileptic drugs which have different modes of action. Uh, which uh, and this is just an example of the, the drugs with the various types of modes of action. Uh, just to give you an idea as to how we should be combining uh, antiepileptic medication uh, when the patient is in refractory status epilepticus or super refractory status epilepticus, we need to combine uh, drugs which have different types of action and also need to uh, have in bear in mind. The, pharma, the, the pharmacokinetics as well as the drug-drug interactions. For example, uh, if you're combining valproate with, with uh, carbamazepine, you should understand valproate is an inhibitor, carbamazepine is an inducer, and, and the complex interactions with carbamazepine and, and valproate might, might be sometimes be detrimental 
uh, in controlling uh, the, the seizure because we wouldn't know what really does what and we wouldn't know the drug levels because the, 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 the fact that we don't have any drug levels uh, available in this country uh, also um, hampers uh, the treatment uh, of status objectives. So, uh, so you need to basically understand uh, how the drugs work uh, and, uh, and the interactions that they would have with each other and also introduce drugs which have uh, different types of modes of action on different receptors uh, when uh, treating these patients. All right, those are the six uh, pearls that I've gone through today. So we've gone through the definition of, uh, of uh, status epilepticus, uh, uh, including uh, the two time points that are necessary uh, for us to define what status epilepticus is. Uh, I've spoken to you about what, why it's important for us to uh, initiate treatment as soon as possible because time is brain. We need to find a cause for the uh, status epilepticus. Uh, I've, got, I've given you a, a few causes that can that we need to be looking out for. The importance of the EEG in managing status epilepticus and also the, uh, the possibility of an autoimmune process in status epilepticus as well as use of consecutive AEDs with different modes of action.